Hello, welcome back. I'm Andres Chat, your tech curious web designer. This is part two of a video series how to build a web app using Tailwind CSS and Alpine JS. In the previous video, we coded the header with the logo and navigation bar. In this video, we will have a look at the hero section. Let's go! So the hero section has a title with a custom font, a line of text, and a button here with hover state and a small animation when you click on it. Okay, let's jump right into the code and add a hero tag. The hero tag will have uh, a h1, so um, a title, a paragraph, and a tag, which we style uh, to a button. Let's add a few classes to our hero uh, tag. So the hero tag is not our official HTML tag. So it doesn't have any uh, special properties. Let's give it the class block as a, as a block element for now. And we'll give it also a background color, BG gray 700. We give it a text white and text center. Okay, let's add some uh, padding, top and bottom. So PY24 and also some padding left and right of 10. Okay, now let's dial the H1. H1 is an element we probably will use more often, so let's include this style in the style sheet. I prepared here some uh, properties for the H1 tag, like font size, line height, font weight, and margin bottom. And now it looks like a proper nice title with the title. Let's move on to the, the paragraph. Let's add some classes here as well, uh, like text large and font bold. Great. Now for the button, we create a class button. An element we will use more often, we include it in the styles as well. There we go. So I created here a class button with a bunch of properties. It also has a, has a hover state and an active state. The active state is when you click on it, it will just shrink with scale down a little bit. It's also using uh, colors as variables. So let's declare those colors in a pseudo root element on top. So here the primary is declaring a, a color and the hover also. So we can just use those variables in our CSS later on. There we go, there's the button. Now let's add a bit of a margin to our paragraph. So margin bottom of 10. Yeah, maybe a bit too much, let's add five. All right, so now let's include a background image. The markup for background image, we can also add it as a class. The markup is this one here, so bg hyphen square bracket URL, and then in parentheses, we can link the image. I grabbed an image from Flickr and insert the link here. There we have our image. It's now duplicated. Let's let it cover the whole width. So we write bg cover. So it covers the whole width and bg center. So it will uh, center it uh, vertically. So I don't, don't really like this part of the image. So I will delete the bg center. So the image will start from the top. Great. Now, if you look at the design, we have a overlay here to make the image a bit uh, softer, a bit darker. 
So let's add that. So we create here a diff. We call it overlay. And then we put all this code also in a diff as well. And there we go. Because those div this we want to uh, stack over each other later on. So the classes for the overlay is a background color of 800. We want the background to be uh, transparent, so opacity of 40%. We want the width to be full, full width, and also full height. There's still a padding around here. This is from the hero section. So we grab the paddings here and include it in this diff. Great. So now I have, we have two diffs and now to have it stack over each other one way to do is is to position them absolute and with set indexes we let them stack over each other another option is to use grid so we change block to grid so it's a grid element now so the grid offers a layout with columns and rows and the idea here is we we have basically just one row and one uh, column so one cell and if we let both divs start the first row and the first column they both occupy the same cell therefore they will be stacked over each other so we write here call start one so let this div start at the column number one and row start one as well so it will start at the very top left the first cell and the same classes we give this div and now they stack over each other we get rid of the overlay text we don't need it anymore okay now we have those two divs stack over each other great so all what is missing now is the custom font for our title here for this i'm using uh, google fonts Let's go over to Google Fonts website. The name of the font is Lobster. There it is. And uh, we select the font here. It shows up in the panel. We grab the code here. There we go. Let's go back and insert the code in the header. And add the property into our H1. So with font, family, colon, lobster. Let's check it out on our website. And voila, we have a custom font now. So the hero section is now finished. Let's add now also the avatar icon to the page, which we can see in the browser tab. What we need is a link element in the head like that. So this is our element. RHEL stands for relationship. So this is the relationship between the code and the browser. So it just tells it's a shortcut icon. We include the type and the, um, the icon itself is the same icon as we use uh, in the logo. The only difference is the logo here is white on black. And for the avatar, we change it to um, black on white. So include six times the zero. Save it, let's go back to the browser, refresh it, and there we go. The avatar is set.
So that's it. In the next video we will look at the page body and the post element. See you there.